So we have seen how electrons revolve around the nucleus in fixed circular orbits. Each orbit has a fixed energy level and these are called, these are also called electron orbits. Now in this video, we will look at how are electrons distributed in these orbits or shells. Are there specific rules that electrons follow when they are getting distributed across these shells? That is what we will explore in this video. So to begin with, let's say we have we have a sodium atom let's say we have a sodium atom and there are there are total 11 electrons that a sodium atom has and if our task is to distribute these 11 electrons in these orbits maybe maybe we can we can have let's say we have four electrons over here and then let's say the remaining are seven and let's say we take or we we have seven electrons in the next shell this will be this will be the l shell right k l m that's how the shells go but turns out this is not how electrons are distributed in a sodium atom in fact the first shell it has two electrons then the next shell has eight eight electrons and the outermost shell has one electron the electrons are distributed in this manner in the shells for a sodium atom, not like how we did in the beginning. Why does the first shell has only two electrons? Why not more than that? Is there, is there a limit to the number of electrons that a shell can have? And turns out there is. The first rule is that the maximum number of electrons, the maximum number of electrons in any shell, maximum number of electrons in any shell is given by the relation of 2n square this is 2n square where n is the orbit so for the first shell that is k shell when n is 1 the maximum number of electrons would be 2 into 1 square which is 2 for the next shell that is l this is n equals to 2 this is a second shell for this one the maximum number of electrons that this shell can have is 8 for the next one that is m the maximum number that it can have is 3 square is 9 into 2 that is 18 so on and so forth so now when we have a look at this setup this makes sense right because the first shell can have maximum two electrons so there are two electrons the second shell can have a maximum of eight and we have eight electrons in in l shell and the last one only has one because there is only one electron remaining but now let's take a different example let's take let's take an example of calcium so calcium calcium atom has 20 protons and 20 electrons every atom is neutral right so 20 protons 20 electrons and now if we distribute the electrons in the orbits we can say that there will be there will be two electrons i'm showing electrons by crosses now two electrons in the first shell it can have two and eight in the next shell that is l so this is four five six seven eight now the number of electrons that remain are 10 and the third shell m shell n equals to 3 it can have a maximum of 18 maximum of 18 electrons so the number of electrons that remain are 10 now let's say we have 10 10 electrons in this one so 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 2 comma 8 comma 10 this is how the electrons are distributed in the shells this is k l m but turns out this is not how the electrons are distributed in a calcium atom. In fact, you have one more shell, you have one more, one more shell, and then you have eight electrons in the third shell, that is M. So again, you have eight electrons here. You have eight electrons here. That's three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then remaining, remaining, you have two electrons. Two electrons come in the outermost shell. This is how the electrons are distributed for a calcium atom but the third shell can have a maximum of 18 electrons right why does it have eight this brings us to the second rule the second rule is outermost orbit outermost orbit can have a maximum of eight electrons outermost orbit can have a maximum of eight electrons and this rule is also it also has a name it's really it's called an octet rule 
there are some exceptions to this rule for example all the transition metals like zinc copper they don't really follow this rule for them the third shell can have a maximum of 18 electrons and they do have 18 electrons in the third shell so the first rule is more of a general rule the second rule is kind of specific to some elements not all the elements there are exceptions like transition metals but still for most of them the outermost orbit can have a maximum of eight electrons and for our relevance at this point we will be following the octet rule that is the outermost orbit should have a maximum of eight electrons so following this rule the calcium atom should look like this this is how the electrons are distributed this is k l m and n the outermost orbit should have a maximum of eight not more than that and therefore the remaining two electrons they they occupy the shell next to it that is the n shell there is one more question here why do we need to fill two electrons in the first shell why can't we just have why can't we just have one electron why can't we just have one electron so let's say we only have one electron here and in the next one it can have maximum eight so let's say we have only seven in the second one let me write that let's say we have one in the first seven in the second they come out they, the total is right now eight the remaining electrons are 12 and let's say we keep the electrons in the third shell to be as eight so one comma seven comma eight and the remaining electrons are now four so let's say we have we have four electrons we have four electrons in the outermost shell why can't the configuration look like this why can't the configuration look like this this really brings us to the last rule the last rule which says the last rule says electrons are filled in a stepwise manner or let's say electrons are not accommodated in a shell unless unless the inner shells unless the inner shells are completely filled are completely filled or we can say that electrons that do not take up a new orbit unless the orbits before them are completely filled right so we cannot have a configuration we cannot have a configuration like this the first shell should be completely filled that is two electrons the second shell should be completely filled that is eight electrons and the third shell should also be filled but we need to also keep in mind the octet rule that is if we have 10 electrons in the third orbit that will be the last orbit but the outermost orbit or the last orbit can have a maximum of eight so the remaining two they occupy the shell next to it let's have a look at some more examples now let's say we take three three more atoms carbon carbon has it has six electrons then let's say we take um, any any atom let's say we have aluminium aluminium has 13 electrons and the last one let's say we have argon which is a, which is an inert gas and it has 18 18 electrons now i'm going to fill for the first one carbon so we have six electrons the first shell the first shell can have a maximum of two the remaining of four and the shell next to it can have four electrons so if we draw it here is a nucleus this is the first orbit and this is the second orbit the first orbit has the first orbit has a maximum of two so you have two electrons here orbit next to it has four so you have four electrons like this this is for carbon why don't you pause the video and try for these two cases aluminium and argon this one has 13 electrons how should the electrons be distributed and this one has 18 electrons how should the electrons be distributed for this one pause the video and give this one a try all right so aluminium has 13 electrons the first shell can have a maximum of two the second shell can have a maximum of eight electrons. The remaining electrons are three, two plus eight, 10. Total is 13, 13 minus 10 would be three. And three, they come, they occupy the last orbit. So in this one, if this is a nucleus, you have the first shell, you have the second shell, and you have the third shell. The first shell, it has, it has two, two electrons. The shell next to it, n equals to 2 or L, it has 8, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And the last shell has 3. 1, 2, 3. All right, for argon, there are total 18 electrons. So the first shell can have a maximum of 2. The second shell can have a maximum of 8. The remaining are 8 more electrons. And so third shell also has a maximum of 8 electrons. And for this one, if you have the nucleus over here 
this is the first shell this is the second shell and this is the third shell so the first one has two the shell next to it has eight so seven eight and the last shell also has eight 